So, you know, I, I was going to name this segment and say things I hated this week because I get annoyed a lot of stuff, and so do you. And when I come in the office, you're here, we're talking, and we're just like, did you see this? Did you see that? This is crazy. It seems like most of the things we're kind of pissed off at, <laughs> you know, and, and – you know, so I want to name things that I hated this week, but I don't hate everything. But there's a, there are a lot of things that we were talking about. I'll let you go first. There's some of the things that, that maybe you hated or you didn't like this week. But there's a lot of news out there that, that, that really bothered me. Yeah. Um, George Strait has a good song called I Hate Everything. That's a good <laughs> plug for him. Uh, one of his 50 or 60 number ones. Uh, non-topic related. You know what? When you asked me about that, I was thinking about this yesterday when you were venting a little bit. You know what I can't stand is when... You meet somebody through an acquaintance, like let's say you're at a bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I kill a lot of time. I go to a bar, have a drink, unwind. And you meet somebody through somebody or whatever. And at the end, you just say, hey, you know, good talking to you, whatever, good bullshit. And you thanks for, you know. And they say, yeah, 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 likewise. I have to admit, I have no idea why, but that goes through me like a night. Like, likewise, what the hell does that mean? Like, if you are a person that uses, and now a lot of my friends, they know this. So they always, hey, hey, great, you know, likewise. But I, I honestly don't know that. that. bugs the hell out of me. I'll, I'll be honest with you. So, um, thought about that. That's one thing off topic. Um, getting back on topic, uh, I will circle back to politics, Frank. You know what upsets me is that people, and you're guilty of this, but you do it the right way. Because around Thanksgiving and Christmas, you always tell people, hey, enjoy time with your family. Don't talk politics. Have a beer. Relax and all that. Yeah, that's fine. Outside of that, people should talk politics more and all the time. And the reason for that being is because if you don't, if people just cower away, you are in a situation like what we have now. So my encouragement to everybody is it's okay to agree to disagree. Um, when I argue and have fun, and I've had a lot of good conversation with some friends here just in the last couple of weeks, especially post you know, while we await election results. Um, my whole thing is, hey, I don't want to change anybody's mind per se. It's not my goal to talk about something and get you to be like, oh, well, you're right and I'm wrong. No, my whole goal is to say, hey, at least you understand where and why I believe what I do. If you agree to disagree, that's fine. Let's move on, you know, but this whole, you can't talk about this. You can't talk about that. It's just more of this nanny state that's being pulled forward, um, because of the coronavirus and lockdowns and all that. And by the way, you sounded a little fired up. Did you, uh, did you go off on lockdowns or anything fun today? Uh, yes. Yeah, nice. I did a little bit. It's just, uh, uh you know what? It, it's, I love how the politicians just go on TV and pretend that they care about you. We care about you. You need to stay home. Don't go visit your family. You got to wear masks and none of them do it. Right? <laughs> so it's just, it's like, come on, man. It, 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 it's so things like that really tick me off of which, which is, you know, again, you know who me. I think has to be having a lot of fun. I got to interrupt you on politics. Did you see what, uh, how do you say the governor here? DeSantos? Is that DeSantis. how you say it? Governor DeSantis. DeSantis. Yeah. Okay. Did you see that he was talking about lockdowns and closing schools down? Did you see who he compared them to? No. So. No. I still think Trump's having the time of his life because he's a drama queen and he's got more drama than he can deal with and he gets to fight all day. The other guy that has to be having a blast is our governor down here in Florida. He says, quote, people who advocate closing schools for virus mitigation are effective today as flat earthers. Can you imagine if you're a lockdown, anti-school, scared to death because of the media and conditions you're in? Could you imagine hearing that? You talk about boiling points. Anyway, that cracks me up. I thought that was hilarious. That's going to piss great. a lot of people off. What do you off. say about, so, so you know, the looters and, and the whole Antifa and... Oh, uh, yeah, they're the trying riots. to... Uh, and then he, he came out and said... It's that, an extension of stand your ground laws, right? Yeah, so basically you're allowed to shoot looters and stuff. Like, yeah. You don't mess around with Florida guns. You don't. You never want to get out of your car and argue with someone. In New York, you yell at people and stuff like that out your window. You don't want to do that in Florida. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Everybody has a gun here. You get they're crazy. To that. <laughs> so anyway, I got you off topic. But anyway, that, that was funny, so... <laughs> Back to the lockdowns and all that kind of stuff. You were, mm -hmm. you were having fun with uh, politicians, uh, rules for the but not for me types. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I tell you, one of the things that really, really, really pissed me off, I'm sorry to say it that way, but it really ticked me off, is, yeah, the NASDAQ's president CEO, she came out, and this was, uh, I think, on Monday or Tuesday, <clears throat> excuse me, said, uh, her name is Adina Freeman. She said, NASDAQ has asked the Securities Exchange Commission to approve new listing rules that will compel the companies on its stock exchange to regularly report on the diversity of their boards and require that they have at least one female director and a member of an underrepresented minority. So basically, I mean, you have to have one woman as board of directors, which, again, this is, hear me out here. 
because I know, you know, people are going to jump to conclusions. Frank's a sexist. Exactly. <laughs> it's crazy. It's unbelievable. Me and my, my, yeah, my wife and two daughters. Wife, yes. <laughs> but uh, I wonder if Adina really thinks that she's helping women by doing this. You know, Daniel, uh, it's, I think what she's really doing is hurting them, but she just doesn't see it. So what is she actually saying? She's saying that even if you do not deserve the position, you should get it because you're a woman. Think about that, how ludicrous it is. Imagine if NBA commissioner, right, Adam Silver came out and said, we need more diversity in basketball teams. So going forward, every organization must have at least white person, one white person on his team. He'd be fired in two seconds, right? If he said that, he'd be fired in two seconds. Absolutely, he's gone. Now, before you jump to conclusions, let me be clear. We have four partners at Curzio Research, 50% of women. Outside of being the founder CEO, which I am, the next biggest position and my company's publisher, Veronica Charette is our publisher. She's amazing. I have more women working at my company than men. Why? Not because I wanted to say, hey, we're a diverse company. Look at us here, right? This is great. Not because it's mandated. It's because every one of them earned that position. They busted their ass. I hired them because they're the most qualified person. And I didn't look at gender, color, or race. And when she came out and said this, I noticed on the financial media channels, they were celebrating this. And I'm like, if I was a woman, that would really piss me off. Like you're saying that even though I'm not as qualified, think about the people who are qualified, who really work their ass off. And they're like, well, I'm going to get this position. Sorry, you're not a woman. You can't get it. You know, compared to, to the women who do have these positions and had to go through a lot of and get there. Right. Uh, are amazing. You have to bust your ass. Whether, you know, again, it, it, you want to open up the environment, but I just don't know if that's the way to do it. I know that is not the way to do it because you know I maybe it's just me and I'm on, on you know and I don't know by myself here. I, I never look at anything. I don't care what race, color, whatever. It's if you could benefit the company, if you respect uh, other people, if uh, you know our intentions are, are you know we want to treat our clients the best. I, that that's what's going to get you hired. I never said, well, 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 no, let's not, it's a woman or, or, you know, someone who's black or someone who's, you know, whatever. And, and for her to come out and say that to me, that, that bothered me. And, and I looked at some presentations and you're going to notice this going forward. Cause I was doing, I just did show you guys about, uh, Barrick when I was covering gold in, in the intro and also Newmont, both of them in the third page of their latest presentation, their quality presentation talked about diversity and how they have women working there. And, and it's just, for me, it's kind of amazing. I, I mean, I, I just, I don't like that. I, I just, I think it puts women down. And I have to tell you, just hiring women, it, it, it's incredible. I mean, I love the chip on the shoulder. The, the, I mean, they work incredibly hard. It, it's, it's, it, it's just, I don't know. To me, this really like pissed me off. I know it's going to sound bad to some people, but you know, as a person who has two daughters, a person who has more women working for my company than ever, the second biggest position, uh, we and also we have two other directors who are women. I mean, they're just the best for the position. That's how I always looked at it. I don't know. Am I out of line here? You, you, yeah, absolutely. Saying. Headline is Frank hates women. Moving on. <laughs> oh, that would be headline. all the. Uh, if this goes out. All those details you just uh, informed us about how many people and percentages and all that. That's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, listen, they're. It's scary because the movement to bring everybody together in a negative sense on equal grounds and equal opportunity and equal outcomes and equal everything else is terrible. And it's just going to make people more and more miserable. And yeah, the, the people that supposedly sit on top of the mountain and claim that they're for diversity and all that are the exact opposites and their actions prove that. I, I think it's ridiculous. I think, I mean, and it's, and it's hilarious. It shows you how stupid it is in the world because, and not that you did it on purpose, you're doing it from that analyst perspective saying, Hey, you know, here's some, here's some stats to back that up. But it's sad that you have to, you have to defend yourself. You'd have to say, well, you know, I, I've worked for women. I work with, you know, because that's the way people are going to listen and, uh, and come across as, oh, well, you know, Frank, they're just trying to help, you know, women and, and, uh, the workforce and all that, you get the glass ceiling and all that. And of course there's bad situations that happen, but mandating it across the board like that. No, it's ridiculous. Of course it is. We need to get back to individualism and results versus this whole paint with a broad brush thing. And you must jump through this hoop to get there.